brewing changed. No longer was I focused on finding the single greatest expression of varietal or terroir, but rather I was looking to find the single greatest attribute from any singular coffee and use that as a building block toward my next brew. Today, I am going to create, design, and architect a coffee for you, and we can follow along on that menu there. That menu is for you to keep, to take backstage. It has all of our tasting experience, so be comfortable. This time is yours as much as it's mine. We're gonna begin with three grams. The same amount of coffee you just saw in that bag in my pocket. It's ground at 300 microns, very fine grind setting that traditionally would be used for espresso. Now, I'm gonna use this fine grind setting and I'm gonna pull it up the wall of a fast filter, today using Sybaris. And in doing so, I'm able to control the flow rates and contact time of my brew. So this first layer, I'll pull up to about the five centimeter mark in the filter here. This base layer in today's brew is gonna be a large contributor to mouthfeel and sweetness. You can see here, I've just pulled it up the wall of the filter and it's gonna create a perfect nest for layer number two to fall on top. Now, this base layer, I generally like to use a coffee that demonstrates nice intensity, as this is a small percentage of the overall brew at about 12% of my brew recipe. However, it's gonna have a pretty dramatic impact, bringing mouthfeel and sweetness into the cup. My goal with creating and designing brews like this one is to find a balance, length, intensity, and complexity four attributes that we'll explore and unpack as we work our way through this coffee. Okay, the second layer today is 14 grams of coffee, grounded 700 microns, so significantly more coarse and a much larger percentage of the overall brew at about 60%. This mid layer is gonna bring complexity to the flavors and the aromas as the largest contribution it will have in our cup today. Generally speaking, I like to use a coffee with vibrancy, clarity, and complexity. And in today's brew, I'm doing that with two different coffees that I'll tell you about shortly here. I'm gonna use this metal pick just to settle the grinds down, break down any clumps that might have formed, and prepare it for the last and final tier of our brew. Now, the top layer. Structurally really important to find balance in this brew. It's five grams grounded 500 microns. So a bit of a finer grind setting than that mid layer. This is gonna bring a large contribution of sweetness and aftertaste into our brew today, as well as balance to the overall cup structure. My total recipe utilizes 22 grams of coffee, 360 grams of water. I'm just shaking to settle the brew to prepare it for the brewing sequence. So it's a three, four technique that begins with 100 grams, followed by two identical pours of 130 grams each. Each pour will begin with 50 grams directly in the middle to soak and saturate the base of my Hario V60, followed by the remainder of the water poured in circular actions around the top of the cone in order to integrate and agitate that top layer. In doing this pouring pattern, I'm able to migrate that top layer of 500 micron particles beneath the mid layer of 700 micron particles, creating wonderful extraction and complexities in today's brew. My water chemistry is set to 96 degrees, 130 parts per million, focusing on calcium and magnesium to bring vibrancy and clarity of flavors into today's brew. The 50 second mark and 140 mark, I'll do my second and third course. So let's talk about the coffees that are in the brew today. If you'll look at the right hand side of your menus, you'll see we've used four coffees within our three different layers. The base layer today is a natural Sudan Rume grown in South Colombia in Valle del Cauca at Las Margaritas Farm. And I wanted to use the Sudan Rume because it has wonderful intensity to the mouthfeel and uh, mouthfeel and acidity, and in today's brew, you'll find that comes through as a medium-high mouthfeel that is juicy and coating. And as the cup shifts to cool, it will remain at a medium-high intensity, but will become more like a warmed honey, smooth, elegant, and coating. The mid-layer today, or pardon me, the acidity that this Sudan Rume will help contribute is medium-high, juicy, whiny, and refreshing 
It reminds me of a Pinot Noir wine. When hot, as the cup shifts to cool, it will remain medium high, still juicy and whiny, but it will become more like a white wine, like a cool climate Chardonnay. The mid layer is composed of two natural geishas, both thrown in Panama on either side of the Baru volcano. On the west side in the region of Volcan, we have a Panama, uh, Panama geisha from Jansen Family Farms Hacienda Los Alpes. This geisha is very red in its flavor characteristics, and in today's brew, there will be red florals and red berries. On the east side of Baru, in the region of Boquete, from Longboard Coffee Misty Mountain Farms, this is a geisha that is very pink in its flavor qualities and will contribute further complexities to the florals as well as wonderful stone fruit qualities in today's cup. The final coffee, the top coffee in this brew, is a natural arena grown in East Mexico in the state of Veracruz from La Jolla Micro Mill. This coffee is so wonderfully sweet, I knew it needed to be a part of this brew that I designed for you today. It's gonna bring a medium sweetness when hot, that's going to escalate to a medium high intensity when cool, reminding me of candied grapes in all attributes, or in all temperatures. The aftertaste that this Lorena will bring to the cup is medium when hot, and as the cup cools, it will crescendo like a beautiful song into a long, sweet, muscat grape can grape candy quality on the finish. We're gonna evaluate the aroma directly from the decanters today. And I'd like you to look for notes of red cherry, dark plum, strawberry, and cherry blossom. Please feel free to evaluate, pick up, and get comfortable with that decanter. This is yours just as much as it's mine. There you are. Ta full taste experience is on these cards, and again, you can bring those backstage with you, so relax and be comfortable. Okay, in the hot flavor profile today, you'll find red cherry, dark plum, strawberry, and cherry, uh, pardon me, hibiscus. Please wait to evaluate until I call my time today and until everyone has been served. In the warm flavor profile, dark plum, strawberry, and Concord grape. And as the cup cools, my favorite part. There's a beautiful muscat grape quality that comes through from the combination of those two Panamanian geishas. This muscat grape is a sweet and floral white grape, if you're not familiar, that will be backed up by red plum and green apple. There you are. Thank you. So it's through a small and simple interaction and question while sharing an extraordinary coffee with a friend that inspired me to build, design, and architect brews specific for unique moments like this one. Moving coffee away from the singular me to the collective we. Judges, if you could please stir with your cupping spoons just three times. This coffee has completely illuminated my perspective on coffee brewing, just like these blocks are with our brews today. Thank you so much for this experience. That'll be my time. And thank you very much, Cole.